Hi guys, this is Mr. Slim and I'm going to take you through the notes on the Minoan civilization. To start off with, the Minoans are one of two early Greek civilizations and all of the mythology that we studied, all of the culture that we're going to see, things like plays and the Olympics, that's all based on, at least in part, uh, some of the things from these first two civilizations. The first one is the Minoans, and these guys appear right around 2800 BCE on the island of Crete. And so one of the first things you want to think about is what are the good things and the bad things? What are the pros and cons of having your civilization set up on an island? So some of the things that we talked about in class were that if you're on an island, it's more easily defensible. You can see your enemy coming from a mile away. You... Uh, are going to be forced to innovate. So if you don't have everything that you need on that island, you have to figure out a way to get it. That could be a, a con also. That could be a bad thing. Um, but it's going to force you to do more than just kind of stay isolated on that island, hopefully. Uh, we also talked about how the possibility for natural disasters goes up. Um, you have many more natural disasters that are going to occur in and along the water. Uh, that would all be possibilities, especially in the Mediterranean area. So, like I said, these first two civilizations, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans, helped to form the basis for what we would think of as classical Greek culture. Uh, the Minoans appear on Crete right around 2800, and it's important to keep in mind that there's an overlap between these civilizations. So, uh, this is right around the time, not exactly, a little bit later, but around the time that we start to see Egypt begin to flourish. And so there's going to be some overlap between those two civilizations. Um, what we think of as classical Greece, it's called Hellenic Greece. That actually doesn't start up till right around 1000 BCE. So um, we can see how these first two civilizations are really going to kind of start us off in terms of Greek culture. If you look on this map here, it shows you where the Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations are. The Mycenaeans right up here on the southern part of mainland Greece. And then here's where we're going to be exploring today, the island of Crete, just to the south of Greece in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, you can see the capital city of Knossos. That's going to come into play later, and you also had to label that on your map. Uh, but that's where we're going to be. Here's a more modern map of the some of the countries of Europe. And here we have Greece. And then beneath there, you have the island of Crete in the Mediterranean. So you can see Egypt is right down here. You can see how these cultures uh, probably would have interacted, especially as we'll see because of the way the Minoan civilization was set up. The Minoans are named after the mythical king Minos. Uh, we've never been able to decipher their language, so we don't actually know what they call themselves. And so we named them after the king from the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. And that's really going to be a common theme throughout today's notes. We want to look for the connections between the myth and the actual history of the people who lived on Crete, the Minoans. And the reason is there are going to be a lot of tie-ins. And we've talked in the past about how, at least in part, myths help to explain things in the world around us. And here we're talking about the actual history of the Minoans and how it actually relates to the myth. Theseus the Minotaur, if you'll recall, starts off with King Minos and his wife displeasing the gods, so the gods curse them with the birth of the Minotaur. And the Minotaur is half man, half bull, he eats human flesh, and he is on the island of Crete, that's where King Minos is the king, and King Minos lives in a palace at Knossos, and to keep the Minotaur quiet, or to at least uh, keep him away from everybody else, uh, he has his architect Daedalus build him a labyrinth, a maze-like structure beneath the palace that holds the Minotaur. Uh, every nine years, the Athenians are forced to send over some sacrifices to the Minotaur, but eventually Theseus, a son of King Aegeus of Athens, he volunteers his tribute to go and try to destroy the Minotaur himself. On his way down there, he meets the princess Ariadne. She is the daughter of King Minos. She falls in love with him and wants to help him, so she is able to acquire from Daedalus, the architect, uh, some magic string. That string helps lead Theseus through the labyrinth, and he is eventually able to defeat the Minotaur. That was the basics of the myth itself. There is actually a palace at Knossos. We have excavated the sites, we being uh, archaeologists, and 
in general, the Minoans tended to have palaces as opposed to religious temples. Now, there would have been some religion that goes on there, but more so about uh, politics and government than religion at the middle of their cities. Knossos, one of the largest cities, uh, think of it like a capital city, and the palace itself was five stories tall. And this was really unusual because most um, buildings would have only been one story tall at the time. And it had many rooms and many passageways and different ways that you could get from place to place. And so hopefully you can kind of see a connection between the actual palace that we found at Knossos and the labyrinth from the myth. So it's a strong possibility that the myth of the labyrinth, the idea of the labyrinth, actually comes from the real palace that was at Knossos built by the Minoan culture. Here is a building schematic what the first floor pretty much looked like, uh, based upon the archaeological dig. A large central court, but you can see these long, thin rooms. Some of them are connected. Some of them you have to go in and out to try and get from place to place. Looks like maybe many closets or many rooms, many meeting rooms. Uh, so you can see if you didn't know your way around, it could be very, very confusing. Here is an artist's uh, idea of what the palace looked like. Again, you have that central courtyard right here in the middle. Uh, then you have different stories in different spots. So some areas uh, are going to have four and five stories to them, going to have four and five floors. Others might only have one or two sections, two stories to them. So depending upon where you were, depending upon what staircase you went up, you could be in a completely different spot and a completely different level of the building. Uh, think of it like biz. I still get lost in biz all the time. Um, I feel like it's like Hogwarts where sometimes the staircase is there and sometimes it isn't. But that's basically what this palace was like. And so you can kind of get a sense for, if you didn't know your way around, how confusing this particular building might be. And then here's what the site looks like today. These dark spots are trees around the outside. Here's that central courtyard we spoke about and saw. And then you can still see the outlines of some of those long rooms and hallways that are held within there. The Minoan economy is uh, really based on their ability to trade. And this is because uh, they were excellent shipbuilders. And if you think back to our pros and cons list, you kind of have to be. If you are living on an island and your island doesn't grow fruit roll-ups, let's say, and you need fruit roll-ups to survive, you're going to have to trade for them somehow. Well, if you're on an island, you can't just knock on your neighbor's door, excuse me, can I borrow a fruit roll-up? So what you have to do is be able to trade. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to travel, travel across water. So you needed to make sure that you would be able to travel safely across water. So you needed a strong navy, and you needed to have strong, positive relations with your neighbors. Uh, that would include the Egyptians. So that's the economy. In terms of Minoan life, the religion, uh, religion of the ancient Minoans is, uh, it should sound familiar to you because, at least in one part, the main god is Mother Earth. And if you think back to the Greek mythology unit that we did, Mother Earth, her name was Gia, and it's a very, very similar concept. So at the very beginning, when we spoke about how the Minoans and the Mycenaean culture, which we'll learn about tomorrow, is uh, kind of serves as the foundation for Greek culture, here's one more example of that, something that is taken by the classical Greeks later on. In terms of the basic culture of the Minoans, much of what we know has to come from paintings. And this is because, as mentioned earlier, we've never been able to decipher their language called Linear A. And um, there are a couple of different artifacts that we still have, and we, there are some similarities to some different languages, but we can't exactly tell what's going on. There's no Rosetta Stone to help us translate Linear A. And so we can see an example of one of these paintings here. The two paintings that you'll see today both come from the palace at Knossos. Here we have obviously a member of the royal family. You can tell by the feathered headdress, the gold inlay all over, the gold decorations, and um, you really get a sense of the intricate coloring of the paintings there. And then if you look on the right hand side here we have a clay tablet and on this tablet we see the language of Linear A. Um, so like this figure at the top kind of looks like pie. Uh, we see some different figures that almost look uh, similar to Mandarin, similar to a Chinese language, uh, such as down here. Um, so it, it, well, there are some interesting theories, but nothing that's really concrete in terms of being able to translate it. There's no aha moment where you're able to figure it out. At this point, 
take a little bit of time, pause, and write at least five lines. What do you think should be considered or would be considered America's sport? You can approach that question how you'd like. Uh, go ahead and make sure that you write at least five lines, and then uh, you can click play again, and we'll continue. All right, continuing on. So there are a couple of sports that are important to the Minoans, the first of which is boxing. And if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. Most early cultures are going to have boxing or wrestling play an important role. And the reason is these serve as training for their warriors for later on. Uh, it's a safe way to ensure that even from a young age, you're able to start to train a military force. Most of these places don't have uh, professional armies or large professional armies and so as a result you needed to make sure everybody could be called upon for military service and be able to execute properly but the big one the one you really want to remember is called bull leaping and it sounds kind of ridiculous but its meaning and what it is is basically what you'd think it would be so it's almost like bullfighting there's an acrobatic nature to it. Think of it like a combination of gymnastics and bullfighting and parkour, and we think that you're probably on the right track as historians. Uh, we think there might be some religious connections. There are a lot of connections to bulls on Crete or in uh, mythology involving Crete. So we already talked about the Minotaur, half man, half bull. Um, but also, if you think back to the 12 labors of Heracles, Heracles, for one of his labors, had to battle the fire-breathing bull of Crete. He had to literally take the bull by the horns. And uh, so we see another connection to bulls in their society. Here's another painting from the palace at Knossos. And you can see there appears to be some sort of performer or figure in the middle doing a flip over top of this bull like it's a pommel horse in gymnastics. Uh, we have two guys on the end. Maybe they're spotters. Maybe they're like rodeo clowns to ensure the performer's safety. Uh, but you can see it's a pretty legit sport. It's not mini golf or croquet we're talking about here. Not to rip on mini golf or croquet, which are both awesome. The last piece of the Minoans is the fall of the Minoan culture. Um, we think there may be a natural disaster involved, and that was something that a lot of students brought up during the pros and cons list. Um, possibly an earthquake, possibly a volcano. Uh, we do have a, a decent amount of activity, tectonic plate activity in that area that could result in that. Um, the earthquake is particularly interesting, though. If you think back, once again, we're trying to make connections to uh, the myth of Theseus the Minotaur. Uh, when the Minotaur got really hungry, he would roar so loudly the whole palace shook, according to the myth. Well, that sounds an awful lot like an earthquake. So it's possible that uh, the myth of the Minotaur, and another connection to history, is trying to explain what happened to the Minoan culture. Um, it just kind of goes away, kind of disappears um, some of it gets absorbed into the Mycenaean culture, which we'll learn about tomorrow. Um, but you still have this possible link to the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. In addition, um, there's a possibility when you have an earthquake underwater, can result in a tsunami. So there's been a couple of theories proposed that a tsunami wiped out the Minoan culture. And it's possible that this is where a man who we'll study later, a philosopher named Plato from ancient Greece, He's the one who began the myth of, or at least the story of, the lost city of Atlantis, a city swallowed by the sea. So it's possible that this is where he got his uh, inspiration for that, or at least that's a hypothesis that's out there. What you're going to do for the homework piece of this is create a bull leaping poster or advertisement. It's worth five points. You need to have the title of the event on there, the date and time that the event's going to be, the location, a color picture to attract people, and a slogan or a basic description of what's going to go on there. This is meant to be a creative assignment, so have some fun with this. Um, really be creative. It's totally up to you how you want to construct it, just as long as you have those five elements. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at the Mycenaean culture, and we'll see some similarities and also talk more about this idea that those two cultures will help to set up uh, what we think of as classic Greek, classical Greek, uh, Hellen Hellenistic Greek time period culture. Thank you guys very much for listening and following along. Please let Mr. Hardesty or myself know if you have any questions.